Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, now for something completely, well, a little bit different. Uh, this is the Hobby Boss uh, F84E Thunderjet uh, 132 scale. It's a bit of a big kit for me. Um, as I say, it's different to what I'd be used to building. With this kit, I've got a um, external photo etch set. Now, I did think when I got this ages ago, uh, there would be seat belts in there, and clearly, you know, so I need to get my own. Um, I've also got a paint mask. More about that in a sec. Um, we'll probably just go for that scheme there, Korea. 1951. I know nothing about this aircraft at all, to be honest. So you'll have to bear with me. I've got no idea if the kit's accurate or not. Uh, it's Hobby Boss, it'll fit together nicely. Uh, accuracy might be an issue. Um, that's not my concern on this, to be honest. I think it's going to go together okay. Um, there's nothing here. I mean, it's quite simple, it's quite a simple jet. You know, straight wing, early jets, very nice too. Um, I think it will be relatively straightforward. The bit that isn't straightforward, as I said about these masks, um, is I'm going to paint the markings. So you get masks, obviously, in there. You get masks to paint all the lettering so that is what this build is going to be about really that's going to be the difficulty and it's a metallic so um, build wise should be relatively straightforward um, paint wise be a bloody nightmare uh, well, I think we've better just, as you can see, we're right at the very beginning, I think we've better just uh, have a go at it. As with all uh, aircraft we sight in the cockpit, um, this is the seat, obviously, you can see that. Uh, slightly different uh, bit of video here, obviously I'm going to do a bit of narration for a change. I think people are getting bored of the same old music all the time. So we'll try this, see how we get on. Uh, the seat's quite nice. Um, like I said in the, previously, there are no seat belts, uh, which is a bit of a shame. And uh, also a little bit of surprise, really. Um, Hobby Boss kits normally, well, they can have seat belts supplied, and it's a real shame that. There weren't any on this occasion. Um, I did look for um, aftermarket ones, but they're all out of production. And can I find them anywhere on eBay? Nah, not a chance. So you'll see in a minute. I've had to. Um, I've had to have a go at making my own. See, it looks quite nice that seat. Not too bad at all. It's a bit of the cockpit bay going in with the, with the seat would sit. Talking of fit, it, everything fits quite nicely, um, no issues really. The cockpit is all out of the box, of course. There is no P at all for the cockpit. Well, like I said, it just just then it's a bit of a bit of a shame, really, because it's 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 a big open cockpit and you can see quite a bit. Just the final pieces, the cockpit going in together, going in now. As there's no, there's no issues with any fit in any of this. And it looks really nice. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? Not too bad at all. So here we go, look, the aforementioned um, seat belts. Now you're not gonna learn anything here, uh, guys. This is, <laughs> 
This is just having a little bit of a play, to be honest. You'll see how they turn out shortly. I mean, they it was okay. As, a, as an exercise, um, it's okay. It's certainly not award-winning by any stretch of anyone's imagination. Uh, but, you know, it's, it, it wasn't about that. It's just about getting this this uh, aircraft together as best as I could, really. Using a bit of super glue to get these. I'm a kicker there, look, there you go. All over my fingers, lovely. So, you know, they, they, they're okay. They're all right. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's getting used to... Basically, all this is is getting used to doing a bit of scratch building, doing a bit of easy modification. Like I say, it, well, you know, it's okay. Once they paint up, they're not too bad at all. This is the now you see that um, photo etch set, or uh, just in the in the back there. That is all internals, a uh, bit of ex. Well, say internals. It's it's wheel bays. I don't really show any of that because we well, don't get to see it at the, f the finished product. So it's, it's just it's a comprehensive set. If you um, if if you actually do enjoy uh, photo etch, I personally uh, don't. To say that is a understatement. There's a couple of bits more going here, all bent on my um, uh, bent little bending machine. Uh, this is, it does come the kit does come with weights. Uh, this is just super glue the weights into the where they should go. I, th there was a bit of a worry towards the end of the build. Is it going to be weighty enough? But it was. It's a shame this isn't done more often. But I, I you understand why the added weight. Uh, you know, kits are expensive enough as it is. That's making things more expensive. They fit in there really nicely. Just the guns, uh, and I did hollow out the um, the muzzles there. Look, not too bad. You don't see them, of course. <laughs> So we're nearly ready for uh, paint. There's going to be a well, selection of colours really. So the cockpit, we're going to be doing um, interiors in chrome white green. Uh, wheel bays, uh, we're going to be the yellow, chrome white yellow. Uh, there's going to be various blacks and silvers. The um, This part here, which is these parts here, now, in the instructions, it does come out for green. Now, I have had a look around uh, the interwebs, and it, it seems it's like a like a uh, like an anodized, like a coppery, bronzy, silvery colour. So I'm going to attempt to mix my own. Don't ask my turn, right? So we will see how we get on. But there you go, uh, and it will be primed mostly in probably grey for the for the um, like for the colours, I don't want it too dark, and then black obviously for any metal parts and black bits. Uh, that's it. Let's um, let's get on. It seems to be quite a lot of spraying, doesn't it? But uh, I'm sure we'll manage. Oh yeah, and the jet pipe is. I've just got to um, wait for this to go off, and then we can sand that right down. You actually will see in there. I've just had a look. The back of the fuselage is quite open, so you. I've got to do something with it really. Obviously, that'll just be a bit better. I'm not worried about that too much. For the next couple of minutes, guys, I'm just going to leave you with a uh, a bit of me spraying. Uh, this is all pretty self-explanatory. You certainly don't need me um, uh, droning over the top of it. So I'll uh, I'll talk to you in a bit. Thank you. 
So this here is the ammo cans, which go in the front of the, just in here somewhere like that. Uh, very nice too. Uh, it does come with uh, a nice bit of photo H detail, as you can see. But I've got it on the wrong face, haven't I? Idiot. So I'm going to have to make some. I'm going to have to make some. So I'm going to have to try and make one out of this bit of plastic hard here. So let's. Uh, we'll see how we get on with that. Obviously, using uh, the thinnest plastic card uh, that I have, and I've got some. So I'm just balancing the um, extra thin bottle just to keep it nice and flat. Um, just going to cut around the uh, this little section here. I felt so silly <laughs> sticking the uh, the photo etch uh, part on the um, on the wrong face. Absolute idiot! What an absolute clown! Stretch sprue. This is just to make up the the little bit of detail. This is the fast setting light green extra thin goes off really quickly um, i've used it quite a bit now i did start using the, the 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 green stuff a little while ago and i didn't think it was as strong as the normal green bottle but i wonder whether i had a couple of dodgy i wonder whether i have a dodgy bottle because uh, you know after after that dodgy bottle it's it's absolutely fine which is uh, not like my placement of this sprue here, this stretch sprue, which isn't absolutely fine. Hmm. Well, you ain't going to see it again. Instrument panel. Now, again, decals on this. Couldn't find much in the way of a um, photo etch replacement. So bugger it let's go with the let's use a decal uh it's not brilliant to say the least the decal itself does sit down quite nicely but it doesn't really give me the finish that you would possibly want shall we say a bit of that's being generous this is the gun deck this is being weathered with uh, the Citadel Non Oil, which is which is really nice. Which is um, really good to use. The instructions do it does say to <laughs> literally slam all the uh, cockpit and the, the gun deck together, uh, all in one, and then just get it into the fuselage. And you'd think when you got to this stage, they oh dear, is it all going to fit? I'm not really sure about all that. So tentatively. Uh, we get everything together, hoping for the best. There's that little um, gun sight deck in that metal colour. So we're trial fitting into the fuselage and we're going and I'm thinking, oh yeah, that actually does fit not too badly. I think what I did here, I forgot to... <laughs> Forgot to put in the, uh, the 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 nose wheel bay, you know, as you do. So we're just going to super glue the top of the nose wheel bay uh, and fit the rest of the the gun deck and the back of the cockpit all in together, and it actually fits in really really well, really well. Bit of super glue just to um, give me a bit of security. And this is just gluing on the the back part of the the, the cockpit, where the um bus the I guess it's the sliding where the canopy would slide up and down on its runners. Fuselage going together, again a bit, a bit with trepidation. Nothing to worry about. Absolutely, uh, standard hobby boss trumpeter. The fit is normally on these kits really good i don't think i've ever had a hobby boss slash trumpeter kit that hasn't fit fitted well at all obviously the accuracy leaves a bit to be desired especially on british subjects but the fit fits 
really nicely. If it fits really nicely, yeah, that's that's I did say that, yeah. Right, what we've got here, the the photo etch fret also has enable you to drop the flaps with showing some detail inside the the drop flapped area if, if you know what I mean so this is me just chopping out some um, plastic very ag agriculturally anything I had to hand get it out sand it down wet sanding everything I haven't done this drop flap um, thing before. And I thought I'd give it a go. It's part of obviously the, the photo H threat. I thought, ah, oh, let's give it a go. What's the worst that can happen? Uh, I don't, I'm not overly keen on having um, aircraft and everything hanging out because I, for me, the personal opinion, put comments below if you disagree. Permit for me, it, it takes away the uh, the look of of any aircraft, and this actually the th the Thunderjet is a particularly nice looking aircraft. So I was a little bit uh, hesitant to do that, but again, it's you just 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 go for it and see what happens. There's the little bending bending machine, very handy, very useful. Don't do a lot of uh, PE. Uh, work but having one of these is 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 a is a real must they if you can get one obviously get one they are quite expensive i can't remember which i paid for i've had this years and years and years i think i even got it on a deal but uh it's it does me it's not it's the medium size uh one oh what is it it's the master tools medium size it's not the small one and in the big one super glue in the um the, the uh, photo etch detail in obviously that kept pinging off which is a real pain uh, ping off that badly towards the end of the build literally was <laughs> excuse me it was literally all hanging out and had to be re-glued in which is uh, annoying to say the least the uh, actuator arms for the the flaps here they're just going in they've had to cut away the plastic sections uh, and these little photo etch bits just literally just glue in no problem if i built the kit again i would uh, i wouldn't have had them i would have had the the flaps up again a purely personal opinion you see the uh the the actual shore tank which is already uh, been fitted I need to show that it's pretty standard there's the wheel wheel bay uh, that he's got a little bit of photo etch inside there again uh, there's not there's no gain on showing you all that work because you don't get to see it in the finished article lovely detail on this aircraft uh, again hobby boss they, they do de I know they're a bit really heavy uh, but it is really nice detail raised and uh, sunken detail As you can see, uh, we're, we're in bits really. Uh, the wings are about to go on. Stabilizers. But I was concerned 
uh, with this with the tail. Now there are decals for this, obviously, but I've got the Montex mass set, um, which has obviously got you know uh, all the bits and pieces to be masked and sprayed. So I'm going to use that. But the, the issue I have, the worry I have is if you can get a, the correct tail plane, or an also one, um, as you can see, if I can get this thing right, God, I haven't prepared myself very well, have I? The, the tail stripes on, on the road here go underneath the, the, the tail plane, and if that was, and if that is glued on, let's get a bit of light on it, excuse me, and if that obviously is all glued together nicely, that's going to be. That's going to be really tricky to um, mask off. So, I ain't going to bother. So, we're going to mask all, we're going to spray and mask this, and then pop in the tailplane. There's a bit of a little gap, you see, I've got to worry about. Muck about with that gap, and then remask all this for when we do the, the, the silver. Uh, likewise, the same with um, the fuel tanks on the side. See that here? But that's purely because, <laughs> purely because it's a whopper to be on my bench. And if I'm going to be trying to mask that off, I know full well what's going to be happening. So I can mask that off, paint that. Get that on there, make good that seam, although it's a bit better than the, the one on the back. Um, and then, then we can think about getting tarted up, muck about with the nose a bit more, and then get ready for a bit of uh, proper paint, a bottle of silver paint. So I think that's what we'll do. As you can probably tell, I'm making this up as I go along, so let's hope for the best, eh? The yellow tape there is to give me the, the centre of the 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 so the chevrons like the the arrowhead of the chevrons so to speak i followed the i measured off the decal and hope for the best uh, and went for it i'm also using all well, using with stripes it isn't too bad that it's quite easy to put stripes as you're probably aware uh, you would use the uh, one stripe to do your actual masking use another stripe then to give you a space, so, that, so that's what we're doing there. We're using the stripe to use as a space, and then just cutting off the the mask there, the masking film, which is a bit hairy, of course, just to get me the um, the sharpness for the for that chevron. It was all going particularly well. So just remove the. Um, the yellow there and then this was this was a bit tricky so I need to get that right angle you just make it up you follow the um, followed the artwork uh, I followed the panel lines really hope for the best not too bad it's a bit of a big lump to have on your bench though that's the one thing i did struggle struggle with and i knew i would do it's 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 quite a sizable thing and you can see that i've left the wings off purely for ease of uh handling if with the wings on it would be really difficult i would have imagined <laughs> Tail planes being glued on uh, after paint. The fit was okay. The fit was pretty good. Um, I did put in some Mr. Surfacer uh, when it was all dry, just to take up a little little gap on the underneath as well. I think so. 
you don't need to see that that'd be fine musking up the the um the glaze in here with the supplied montex uh, mask set which is does inners and outers a little bit complicated on the actual canopy itself because i <laughs> as usual started off putting the wrong putting the outers on the inners i think it was the other way around but anyway, anyway i got there in the end and it didn't really fit you can see the yellow there some of it doesn't fit I've yet to find the mask set that actually nails on. There is a, a one I did for the Anson, which we found on e, which I found on eBay, uh, and that did fit excellent. That was the best one I've ever had. The Edward masks don't really fit sometimes, which which is you can get over it, but it, why should you get over it? Wings going on relatively uh well i say relatively the fit was again uh superb uh no gaps to be filled i think i use a bit of mr service just for the end of it you can see it's getting all a bit um it's getting all a bit cumbersome now difficult to manhandle using the wheel bay doors as masks as you can see and using the black glue just purely to see uh, where it's going we're really getting ready for the main event so this is where <clears throat> we're ready for a bit of priming masked off the uh, the glazing as you can see and this has all been fixed down with PVA Uh, some white glue just to keep it temporary obviously as a mask as, and to obviously paint the, um, the window frames so to speak so I've got to clean this off um, and then we'll give it a, a black prime with some Mr Surfacer a couple of the bits here as well to do uh, and then we'll see where we're at from there actually I've got to just quickly put a mask on that so I'll probably leave this and just leave it and then mask off and, and repaint the interior whatever it is but let's um it's such a <laughs> you know this is such a, a whopping great big um, lump for what I'm used to to have on my bench I can barely fit it in the uh, in the screen here uh, and what a lovely looking aeroplane oh man I love it so uh, let's uh, crack on I won't show any painting there's no need you've seen priming before so um, yeah what a beauty here we go look all um, primed up now I'm going to um, just go over this just with a bit of um, just with a really uh, blunt sanding stick or some just to, just to get rid of it. it's smooth I don't know if you can hear that there's a slight the odd bobble here and there you know where the, where the airbrush spits out a bit of whatever so I'm just going to knock that down a little bit bring it up to a little shine I don't want it too shiny because the, although this is a metal finish we're not going for like a shiny shiny metal finish this is a um you know, this is a, a war jet at, at the end of the day, based in Korea, so it would be pretty grimy. And the colour we're going to be using, not that you're going to see it sprayed on again, because a, a couple of reasons really. Um, it's boring, and it doesn't really fit in my spray booth, so it's uh, difficult to film. So we're going to go with some that there, uh, matte aluminium. Uh, AK stuff, the enamel based um, stuff gives you a nice matte finish, um, a little bit metallic. But there are two reasons going for this. Like I say, it's for a, like a like a like a, um, a matte, uh, oxidised, um, unshiny kind of finish. And the fact I've got two bottles of it, so which I mean, this probably take. And there's not a lot in there anyway so we're going to go through probably 
quite a bit of this. So the next time you'll see, um, next time you see that, we should be shortly, any minute now, we should be all um, silvered up. Let's hope for the best. So there you go. That's matte aluminium. Matte, isn't it? So I'm gonna leave that for a day now. Um, because I need to mask this off here, this top section here, there's an anti-glare strip that goes along there. Uh, olive green, olive drab. Uh, and just to be doubly sure that this um, paint has gone off. I mean, it's fine to touch now. It's enamel, so it's, it's gone off straight away, almost. So, but I'll just give it, um, you know, we'll just give it some time. And I can't even get it in. I'm now even worried <laughs> about taking some shots when it's done. But anyway, that should ask what she looks like. So off camera, I've just done this uh, dark aluminium band here, which I've seen on um, some photos. It's quite pronounced. I don't quite know what that is, why they've different metal. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, so what we're going to end up doing now is we're on to um, masks for the um, made insignia. Lettering, um, stars and bars, and we've got some codes on the on the nose here uh, so we will it's so hard to film I will have a go and see how we get on uh, you might just end up seeing the finished article but as you can imagine we're um, masking these are Montex masks so I can't leave them on for too long because they're vinyl they do tend to shrink a little bit I think the moral of this is this is the <laughs> this is the way forward it's the first time I've actually done this to any um, big degree because I've got to do the obviously the stars and bars yet and there's some like I say the serial numbers to go on here and on the back here as well this is stars and bars so I mean it's, it's okay I mean you can see there's a little bit of a funny skew if you line but that's the way forward. How good is that? That's great. Right, crack on with this side. Now, I don't think I'm going to be able to film this because it's it's such a big model. Like I keep on saying, it's it's quite difficult for me to um, to show you. But I will um, I'll endeavour to do my best. Well, this spraying was done outside my spray booth which is fine and a mask on door open the lacquer paints go off really quickly so wasn't really that much of an issue the tamiya uh, lacquer and these mops obviously are absolutely fine the mop is is i haven't used mop for for a couple of builds and it's, <laughs> it's absolutely a superb paint now any purist was probably going to say well they can say if they want to that the colors aren't correct but that's fine these are what I have, and these are what I'm going to use. I did think about mixing up a blue, because that blue is probably not dark enough. But I, you know, life's too short to worry about things like that. So we went for it, and as you'll see the results in a minute, it turned out okay. I will use these colours on RF handles, so, you know, don't worry about the colour too much, lads. I don't get, don't get hung up on colour too much because every eyes is different and like I say life's too short 
star coming off as you can see if only I need someone who had a uh, a proper cutter they can cut me masks and then finally just pulling off the main the main mask here uh, to give us the final reveal of this star and bar dun, 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 dun. Boom! You can tell I'm quite pleased because this is the first time I've I've done this, certainly on American markings. The main reason I used this liquid pigment from Life Colour was I was a little bit concerned with the, the enamel paint. I didn't want to be using uh, clearly enamel washes, oils with either odorless thinners or enamel thinners uh, because I was obviously worried that we're going to be damaging the paintwork so a friend of mine started using these so I thought I'd give them a go um, they're obviously completely acrylic don't smell at all what I didn't think about which I know you're probably saying now is the fact that the, the metallic paint isn't the, isn't the best <laughs> isn't the best to use this on uh, I didn't really think it through as you can imagine what I should have done really is just used a clay wash in fairness but it works okay um, I I did when I did use it on the the black and the olive drab on the the little um, stripe there on top of the fuselage it works fine it works okay the, the metallic however not quite so I like to use some liquid soap there to give me to break up the surface tension so it would actually flow a little bit but it it it, it, it went on absolutely fine uh, it's um, life color so it's a good product like i say completely acrylic there's no dangers this is speeded up by the way of course this is no dangers of it doing anything untoward doesn't smell so you could use this in the living space where you're watching bit of telly no one's going to be complaining obviously you couldn't do that with enamels and with oils with, with the thinners it does tend to uh, dry out quite a bit as you can imagine especially this was done like when it's quite warm as well so they was they were drying out you can almost see them drying out in them in the in the bottle lids there uh, and you do probably you should really give if you can't take it from the the bottle give a bottle give the bottle a shake every uh, every now and again to get them the pigments uh, flowing around this is the this is the wings and fuselage set uh, I don't quite know why it's got a the colors it's got but they, they you know they work okay the landing dust which is I'm using here it's a little bit pale for my liking but you know who am I to say
there were no varnishes used in this build. There was no glossing. There was no matting or, or satin uh, used. Uh, just just point of reference. Uh, this is the the front wheel struts. Now these are white metal, cleaned up a little bit and sprayed uh, with silver. As you can see, the the little ends there has been sprayed with some clear yellow just to give it a bit of a off color for a bit of interest as you can imagine now lads we're coming to the end uh, this is like a made up oil wash it's like a dirty black brown uh, i use sometimes finishes it quite nicely uh, these are the bombs that are going on um i did Textured these up with some Mr. Surfacer, which I didn't show. I didn't think it was that important. Textured up a little bit, sanded back, and then sprayed up with using the decal, the uh, supplied decal uh, for the for the stripe there. This is the uh, the air brake going in. As I say, if you've managed to get this far, give yourself a pat on the back because it's been a bit of a long slog. And it's probably been a long slog for me too. <laughs> well, thank you for watching anyway, if you have made it this far. Tell me how you think, tell me what you think about the uh, the narration. Is it better? Is it an improvement than the silly uh, music, which is a bit, I don't know, I totally understand people say it's a bit, well, I won't we'll use the words that people have used, but... Uh, Unveiling the gun bay deck, which is really nice. I actually, fit that fit is really good that you can have that uh, bay open or closed if you're going to show this this aircraft. But anyway, thanks for um, sticking by. Uh, give me some likes if you fancy it, or give me a thumbs up, whatever you want to do, whatever you fancy. And hopefully, we'll see you uh, on the next one. So uh, take care, lads, and happy modelling.